Hey, I'm Ryan O, you're watching The Daily BA, and this is my new installment called Why Context Matters. We're gonna pick apart the little things and show how it's never just one thing, but it's a mix of everything coming together. What do a scientist, the alt-right, hippie liberals, the devout Christian, physicists, mathematicians, and you, however you wanna describe yourself, identify yourself as, what do we all share? What do we all have in common? Well, when you approach something, be it a book, a social media post, your siblings, anything that you can think, hear, see, smell, feel, do in life, it comes down to really having a set of philosophical assumptions, ways in which you believe that the world works and operates. And that is today's topic. Assumptions are statements taken to be true that are used as the foundation for other ideas, principles, entire fields of study, but is really uncertain. That is, they cannot be evaluated, but they affect everything that you do. Hence, the foundation. Some argue that they don't matter because they can't be tested themselves, but to argue that really reveals this unbounded faith that experimentation leads to the truth, which is really just an arduous claim in and of itself. Now, I wanna lay out a few ground rules when it comes to assumptions. First, using categories of one worldview to analyze and criticize another is illegitimate and inherently useless. This is from one of my favorite articles, Hayes, Hayes and Reese, 1988, link down below. Second, no world hypotheses or a set of assumptions can be strengthened by revealing shortcomings in another. The weaknesses of one worldview in no way implies strength in another. Sounds perplexing, but they're separate systems. Third, eclecticism, if it involves combinations of distinct world hypotheses, is really just inherently confusing. Each world hypothesis entails a different set of conceptual categories, which many of which are mutually contradictory across different world hypotheses. There's no coherent combination of currently popular worldviews that seems likely and none have yet to really succeed. Now, as I mentioned, that came from Hayes, Hayes and Reese, 1988, a fantastic summary of Pepper's world hypotheses. And really I wanted to break down four common worldviews that they really distinctly describe in there. And the first one's mechanism, which holds this root metaphor of the machine. Now, any common sense machine is comprised of parts and other parts, and they're supposedly all related in different ways. These relations amongst the parts do not change the nature of the parts. And really just simply stated, if you can figure out the parts, how they relate, how they work together, you can sort of just figure out how the world works. And many scientists approach from this worldview, trying to seek the truth, Models of biology, the brain, et cetera, are typically approached by this sort of mechanistic framework. And the second one's formism, which is really built off of this similarity concept. And to quote, the kind of similarity implied here is the recurrence of recognizable forms. Blades of grass, sheets of paper, rows of donuts, or the like, all of these. And simply said, each has characteristics that define it. And they can be arranged in these classes or systems of facts. And the goal is to figure out all the possible systems out and organize them neatly. And the Lippmann's test is really if you can organize these things neatly based on the system. As long as things correspond, well, your model is coherent. Brings us to number three, organicism. The root metaphor is really the process of organic development, as in living, growing, organic systems. Us, the ecosystem, different mammals, all of that are examples of this. That is, Hayes, Hayes, and Reese describe it as this process of organic development, as in living, growing, organic systems. In such systems, Change is given and stability is to be explained. So for example, a person is assumed to move from one stage of growth to another in orderly ways. Simply stated, these stages are discovered, outlined, discussed, refined, and further organized. And when a network of interrelated facts confers on a conclusion, then we figured it out. The Lemons test is the same as formism. If you can organize new things based on the system, well, as long as it corresponds to your model, well, it makes sense, it works. It is, it's deemed valuable. Now the fourth one's contextualism, this root metaphor of the ongoing act and context. That is, there's always something that's influencing around us and this context really matters. And I'll quote that the analyses are true only in terms of the accomplishment of the particular goals. No postulational provision is made on the evaluation of the goals themselves. Truth may thus exist with regard to relatively trivial goals. So simply said, this is all about successful working. If the way that you approach the world helps you achieve whatever it is that your goal is, regardless of the type of the goal, well, then it's useful. It works, it's, it's valid from that scientific perspective, and cool, you understand the world, you can move forward. 
Now if these don't make sense or take just a little while to sink in, you're not alone. I was there. You can pause, rewind, listen to them. It took me a long time to really practice and rehearse this and come back whenever you'd like. The interesting thing about them is everybody has them. We all form them. No matter how aware of them we are or not, they're influencing our day-to-day -day actions all the time and how presumably we help others and interact with others. With there being no way to prove which one's better than the other, it seems like a bit of a free-for-all. Sure, there's these moral, ethical implications, and rightfully so, but when it comes to understanding why we do what we do, the way that the world works, this is why there are so many answers, so many contradictory facts, and just so much like, Ah, out there everywhere. And no one's quite sure, but they are more or less sure based on their working assumptions, if that makes sense. A little paradoxical, it seems. And this is why we have great scientists saying contradictory things all the time. Human brain that renders that question obsolete. To that, I've got to say, like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I referred earlier to religion just a little bit as an example, and this holds there too as well. But it's really beyond my scope of competence and being agnostic myself really an unfair thing to approach. So I'm gonna set that aside up to y'all. But really, why in the hell does this matter? What is this point of this? Let's bring it home. Well, good old N.H. Pronko, really, really fantastic psychologist, says that there is a big risk if we're not being clear on these when we're engaging in things day to day or when we're having discussions, holding viewpoints, discussing our viewpoints with others that may hold contradictory assumptions. So if I asked you, what are your assumptions about how the world works, how behavior occurs, why we do what we do, like, can you articulate them? And if not, I'd like to offer just a quick reading on how to become cognizant of one's assumptions based on Pronko's great book. As a way of encouraging a greater awareness of the role that assumptions play in psychology, Van Com suggests a certain program for advanced students of psychology. When they do the research work, students should state what their guiding assumptions are and what their results mean in the light of those assumptions. Then let them interpret the same results in terms of the assumptions that underlie a behavioristic, gestalt, or psychoanalytic approach. You can put in the other worldviews that I had there, whatever you want to pick. Such an exercise would parallel the case of a prosecutor of a criminal suddenly assigned to defend the same criminal. The lawyer in both situations must show flexibility and make the best possible case in either role. So with the students, who would be forced to be flexible in handling a given set of data under incompatible or even contradictory set of assumptions. Over a period of time, such a program would lead to a universal awareness of the role of assumptions in psychology, replacing the almost universal contemporary denial of their existence. So, assumptions. That's what we all have in common. And that's also the beauty of assumptions. They're agnostic to how you identify. Always there, always influencing you, whether you like it or not. In case you were wondering, I do my darndest to try to subscribe to contextualism. That's what you'll see on this channel, at least where I'm operating from. If that's not clear, now you know. And why? Because, well, it seems to be the most productive regardless of the area of study or inquiry. But the choice is yours. Let's all do each other a favor and be just a little bit more clear where we're coming from, regardless of where it's at. And I'll see you in the next one. That is why context matters. And that is your Daily B.A. Do you really think anyone gives a shit about this? <laughs> it's so important, but like, I, I just, I don't know if that's consumable whatsoever. What do you think? I mean, I think it's good, but just like, I'm, I'm weird. Like, I'm really weird. Like,